Hi, and thanks for tuning in to Sweet Talk with Taylor. Today we'll be discussing how to properly import your QuickBooks information into your Construction Suite estimate. As seen here in our QuickBooks integration tab, you can see that the options for importing from QuickBooks include importing your QuickBooks actuals, which include bills, checks, paychecks, and credit card transactions, importing QuickBooks committed costs, which will correspond to any purchase orders you have for your QuickBooks job, and importing QuickBooks invoiced amounts, which will correspond to any invoices that you have on your customer job. If you look up here on the toolbar, you'll also notice that of those three, you can create a QuickBooks invoice and a QuickBooks purchase order directly from Construction Suite to have those populate with your Construction Suite items within QuickBooks. Actuals, such as bills, can be populated in QuickBooks based off of a purchase order created from Construction Suite in order to automatically populate those with the items that you have chosen. However, today we're not going to focus as much on how to create these items, but what to do once they have been created to ensure that they come back into your Construction Suite estimate properly. Now, starting with purchase orders, if we go over here to QuickBooks, we'll take a look at our vendor center, and in this case, Home Depot is going to be our vendor for this job. We have created a purchase order for Home Depot for some of our items in our construction suite estimate. Now, you can either manually populate these, or as I mentioned, you can create them directly from the construction suite estimate and choose which filters to apply in order to get the correct items from the sections of your construction suite estimate. There's two primary things you're going to focus on when you're looking at purchase orders to ensure that they'll come back over into your construction suite estimate correctly. The first is going to be the item name. You will want to ensure that the item name used is one of the construction suite items that was sent over with the estimate and that the name matches up exactly with the framework that you see in your construction suite file. In this case, I chose to use a parent item indicating that it is part of the UDA item list, which makes it easier to distinguish from any other items you have in QuickBooks. But the important thing is to make sure that the item used is the one that came over when you sent that estimate over. The second thing you're going to want to pay attention to is the customer. Now in this case, you do want to make sure that the customer does have a job associated with it as well, and that the customer and the job correspond to the information in Construction Suite. You can double check that by making sure that the customer in QuickBooks matches up exactly with the client in Construction Suite, and that the job in QuickBooks matches up exactly with the project name in Construction Suite. As long as you have your items correct here and the customer job assigned to match up with the construction suite information, all of this information in the purchase order will come over correctly. If we go back to the construction suite estimate, we'll go up here to import from QuickBooks and choose to import our committed costs corresponding to that purchase order. It will save our estimate to ensure that we have the most up-to-date information. And it will then use the client and job name in construction suite to search the customer job in QuickBooks for any purchase orders that we have listed. You will see here that it gives us the option to either import all purchase orders, just open purchase orders, or just closed purchase orders. And for those last two, we can either include partially unreceived or received quantities as well. In this case, we'll choose to import all. And as mentioned, it will then scan that customer job within QuickBooks to import all of our committed costs. Once done, you'll see this committed cost option appear. And you can see that we do have a purchase order for our framing and exterior windows and doors categories with those values filled in. If we go back over to QuickBooks, we can go back to our vendor center and take a look at some of the bills that we have. When you create a bill, as mentioned, you can either create one directly from a purchase order created from QuickBooks by receiving against that purchase order, or you can manually insert items from the construction suite items list. Just like with the purchase orders, you will want to make sure that the items correspond to those construction suite items and that the customer job is correct. One thing you'll also want to note on these actuals, such as bills, checks, and paychecks, is that they are on the items tab and not the expenses tab. When construction suite pulls this information, anything on the expenses tab will be ignored and it will only pull the values from the items tab. So once you've verified those three things, the items tab, the item name itself, and the customer job, you can once again come back to construction suite import from QuickBooks, and choose to import your QuickBooks actuals. Now again, you'll have some options as to which actuals you would actually like to import. You can include checks, bills, credit cards, and paychecks. For the checks, you can do all, printed or unprinted. And for the bills, you can do all, paid or unpaid. In this case, we're just going to bring all of our actuals in. We'll select OK, and again, it will scan that customer job for any bills, checks, paychecks, or credit card transactions we have. Once done, you will see our QuickBooks Actuals column appear, as well as a Variance column alongside it. If we scroll down, you'll see that we do have some of these items that we have already billed for here in Cabinetry and Countertops. 
The 8400 has shown up next to the 9400 total price, and the variance has given us a $1,000 variance between the total price and the actuals. These will also total nicely at the bottom of your uh, project totals page to give you the total actuals, the total price of the estimate, and the total variance. Now you may notice that your variance is calculating strangely or not as you're expecting it to. There are two ways to calculate variance within Construction Suite. The default is the line item variance, which means that any line items that you have that have an estimated value but no actuals so far will actually not calculate a variance. If you would like to calculate a variance uh, between the difference of the total price and the $0 actual, you can come to the Tools Options menu and uncheck the line item variance, and that will use what we call bottom line variance and give you the true variance between $0 values as well. The last thing you can import from QuickBooks is going to be your invoices. So if we move over to our customer center here in our Hastings residence job, we'll open up an invoice so you can take a look at how that's supposed to look. This is the same thing as the purchase orders. Ensure that your items are correct, that your customer job for the invoice up here is correct as well. And coming back over to Construction Suite, we can go to QuickBooks Integration and import our invoice amount. Now with the invoice amount, you'll see that we can do either all paid or unpaid. Keeping consistent, we'll go ahead and do all of these. And as with the purchase orders and actuals, you will see that an additional column will appear here for our invoice amounts. And it will distribute those invoices through the correct items in your Construction Suite estimate. Now keep in mind that if you create these invoices or purchase orders directly from Construction Suite, it will ensure for you that the customer job is correct and that the items are the same ones from Construction Suite. So that makes your life a little bit easier. But if you do want to create them manually and pick and choose which items are included, you can certainly do that as well. One last thing to note is in Construction Suite, once you bring this information over, it will populate your financial graph on your Today screen with the correct amounts in the bar chart. So you can see now that we have our actuals, committed costs, and invoiced amounts now showing on our financial graph. Now whether you are importing actuals, invoiced amounts, or committed costs, keep these few points in mind and you'll be able to take full advantage of the flawless integration between QuickBooks and Construction Suite. Thanks for tuning in to Sweet Talk.